Davis. The team needs more muscle. Meet Bulletproof. The story of Invincible brings out the personal struggles of its cast, and while Mark Grayson has to struggle to figure out whether he's a vicious Viltrumite conqueror or a force of harmony and peace, there's one character whose struggles the new fans might have missed that happens to be Bulletproof, the member of the Guardians with the power of flight. Since his introduction in the ninth issue of Invincible, Bulletproof was seen there as a helping hand for Mark and as a liar who knowingly pushed his friends into the hands of a highly intelligent dictator. But what made him this way? Could it be because of some events in his past, specifically the murder of his parents? But why would he do such a thing? Well, that's what we will find out, so let's get into it. But before we get into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Who is Bulletproof? Why did he kill his parents? The story begins like this. In a suburban neighborhood, there was a family, just like many others, or so you'd think. There was Mr. Randolph, Mrs. Randolph, and their two sons, Tyrone and Zandale. Any passerby would look at their family and feel a little envious. One son was a leading geneticist, working with high-ranking officials, while the other was a painter. Somewhere, this family had hit the jackpot when it came to balancing between science and arts. But if anyone dared to venture a little deeper, they'd learn something far more disturbing that laid buried within. It's not unheard of for parents to have a favorite child most of the time. They usually don't make it obvious, but some parents do. The Randolphs were exactly like that. In their case, their favorite son was Tyrone. They supported him, spent time with him, cheered for him, and did everything they should have done as parents, while giving Zandale none of it. You would think that Tyrone must have noticed that. Surely he must have. But no, he never did. Or even if he did, he never quite understood the gravity of the situation. He used to call himself the Builder and Zandale the Decorator. I'm not quite sure if he actually knows how condescending that sounds, but Zandale knew his brother didn't mean anything by it. Sometimes when you love someone who's oblivious to your pain, it's better to just pretend everything is fine instead. That's what Zandale did for years. He knew his parents preferred his brother more, while he got none of the same love. But instead of letting that get to his head and affecting his relationship with his brother, Zandale maintained quite friendly terms with him. He would often visit his brother and learn more about his work. One thing Zandale noticed about Tyrone, which even his parents, despite their overbearingness, failed to notice, was his obsessive nature. Tyrone was obsessed with superheroes and supervillains. One would think that he was just sitting in front of the computer watching hours of footage of battles and whatnot, but actually he was working on something else. See, Tyrone was a geneticist. He knew the human genome like the back of his palm. Seeing the extent of superpowers that any seemingly normal human can get just by some alterations in the genes fascinated him. I mean, I don't blame the guy, that is pretty cool. But what's not so cool was kidnapping his brother for a nasty science experiment. That's right folks, after Tyrone had figured out how to give someone powers, he decided to use his own DNA as the test material. Obviously, he wasn't going to lay down his life for this noble cause, as he called it, so he drugged his brother on one of their get-togethers. Other than Zandale being the perfect guinea pig DNA-wise, and being his twin brother, Tyrone truly believed that Zandale was not doing much with his life. So it would be perfectly fine if Zandale died in the process. Seems like in the true Randolph family tradition of being garbage to another person, Tyrone's apple didn't fall far from the tree. Imagine Zandale's horror when he woke up from a drinking session, hanging upside down on a contraption that was surely going to kill him. Zandale tried to plead with his brother, hoping the pleas would awaken some sort of brotherly affection in Tyrone's heart, but Tyrone was far gone. His mad scientist persona had taken over, and Tyrone started the machine. The aftermath of it was devastating to say the least. Yes, Tyrone's theory turned out to be right, and yes, Zandale ended up with powers, but at the cost of Tyrone's own life. When the machine was turned on, Tyrone was burnt to a crisp. When Zendale touched his charred skeleton, the only remaining proof of Tyrone was the burnt bones turned into a cloud of fine dust, making it seem like Tyrone was never there. The horror, grief, and shock of losing a sibling, albeit an evil one, took a toll on Zendale's mental health. He was not sure what he was supposed to do, but he knew that his parents would lose their minds if they learned about Tyrone's death. Plus, all the proof of his wacky superhero project was gone, wiped away, so even if Zandale was to go to anyone, no one would believe him. Seeing the tough situation he was in, Zandale started living a double life. As you'd expect, the man would dress up as Tyrone and pay his parents a visit. Moreover, Tyrone never really visited his parents often, probably because of his superhero project and the military funding he was getting, so it was not hard to fool his parents at all. As Tyrone, Zandale got to experience parental love, affection, and care for the first time. He knew that eventually he had to tell the truth, but he never quite knew how to say it to his parents, even seeing how happy they were to see him. 
Zendale decided instead of coming clean, he would tell his parents that superhero Bulletproof was none other than his brother Tyrone. That way, he wouldn't have to visit his parents and play this horrible game with them. But as you know, the truth always comes out, and the timing is quite often really nasty. The Flaxen Dynasty, the alien race that showed up time and time again in the Invincible Universe, appeared yet again to terrorize the citizens. Zendale, who was filling in for Invincible at the time, attacked the leader of the group. This led to a fight that would have resulted in a lot of damage had Robot and Monster Girl not shown up on time. Zendale managed to get out of this fight with just a broken arm. With his arm in a cast, he went back to his place, back to his lover Carla. But there was a surprise waiting for him at his place, and not the good kind. It was his parents. They knew they were in Zendale's house, so Zendale could not pretend to be Tyrone. On top of that, the fight where he got his arm broken, that fight was shown all over the news and everyone saw it, including his parents. They cornered him immediately and asked him to tell them everything. Why was he the one with the broken arm when Tyrone is supposed to be bulletproof? And where was Tyrone? Dead. Tyrone was dead, and he died because of his own machine malfunctioning. That's the truth, but Mr. and Mrs. Randolph could not believe their baby boy Tyrone could be so evil. In their eyes, their boy Tyrone could do nothing wrong. They heard the whole story that you've heard so far, and all they took from it was Tyrone was dead and Zendale was the one who killed him because Zendale was the one alive. Zendale pleaded with his parents to believe him for a change because he would never hurt his brother, but Mrs. Randolph was confident Zendale was a bad son. She was just about to call the police when BAM! A cast iron skillet landed on the top of her head, splitting her skull open. And the one who did this? Carla, Zendale's girlfriend. Time stood still as blood poured out of Harriet Randolph, her body no longer responding. Seeing his wife bleed out on the floor made Mr. Randolph see red. He attacked Carla and started pummeling her to the ground. Zendale was understandably shocked at what was happening around him. He knew he had to stop his father from killing Carla, who was turning limp after being suffocated. But in his haste to hold his father back, Zendale ended up snapping the man's neck, killing him on the spot. Silence befell the young couple as they realized the gravity of their situation. But Zendale knew what he needed to do. He put his parents in their car and threw the car off a cliff to make it seem like they died in a car accident. Zendale and Carla attended the funeral, silently watching as their secret got buried six feet underground, with the mangled bodies of his parents. But even though he committed the sin of killing his parents, Zendale was not a bad guy overall. His life until the moment this event unfolded was quite heroic. Joining the Guardians of the Globe Like, for example, right after he got his powers, instead of letting them go to waste, he decided to try out for the new Guardians of the Globe. He didn't make the final cut, but his ability to fly was noted. Later, when the team felt like his powers was something that would definitely help them out, they asked Zendale to join him. This was a new chapter in Zendale's life. Remember the episode of the first season where Invincible had to go up against Machine Head and he was beaten up by Battle Beast? Well, in the comic book, by this time, Bulletproof was already part of their team. After Invincible got hurt, Bulletproof and the Guardians arrived on the scene to protect Invincible. Black Samson and Bulletproof attacked Battle Beast in retaliation, and they got their asses handed to them. But it's the thought that counts, after all. The TV series severely cut away Bulletproof's involvement in the story, because we barely get to see him in the show. But he was very much present during some of the major events, which completely changed the group dynamics of the new Guardians of the Globe. For example, he was there when Robot showed up in his new body, or when Immortal and Duplicate's relationship became public. Right when Immortal and Duplicate are about to get married, Cecil tells them about the Sequid invasion happening on Mars. Bulletproof accompanied his teammates to help him defeat the Sequids. All this running around made him tired, so Zandale decided to take a nap. Weirdly enough, he ended up napping through the part where their ship got destroyed. Talk about being a heavy sleeper. Like some of you guys in the comment section, Zandale woke up and chose violence. He used his powers to push the protective bubble that Adam Eve had created and crashed into the Martian ship that was attacking them. Shapesmith started a dispute with the Martian and Zandale and punched one of the Sequids. This alerted everyone of the presence of the Guardians, and oh boy, were they in for a sour welcome. The fight that followed was brutal, and everyone was able to get out of the hellhole known as Mars when Invincible emitted a pulse. Zandale was happy that he finally got to be part of this hero business, but everything was happening super fast and it was too much. He was getting overwhelmed, as you can imagine. Zandale didn't have a moment to relax, because right after they returned to Earth, the heroes were captured by Magma Knights. They managed to escape Magmite's clutches with the help of the Reanimon and Darkwing II. But even then, Zandale could not catch a break. Right when he was relaxing with his teammates, Invincible crashed through the building, asking for his help. While Bulletproof did agree to help Invincible, no one knew that he would be quitting right after. Leaving his position in Guardians of the Globe, Zandale returned to the former teen team base. But that's not to say he didn't help the Guardians when they needed it, just like with the villain known as Powerplex. Being a hero is a tough job, and Zandale was getting to experience that firsthand.
The Reality of Being Invincible When Mark went missing and things were getting rough, Zendale decided to take on the mantle of being invincible. As invincible, he had to help Eve take down the villain who could transform himself into a Tyrannosaurus Rex. This villain, aptly known as Dinosaurus, was a nuisance. Right after dealing with this villain, Zandel had to take care of the Flaxen army, who were trying to invade Earth yet again. This is where he got his arm broken and later went home to kill his parents. Zandel was sure that someone had kidnapped Mark, but the reality was, Mark was out there fighting the Viltrumite War. Eventually, he returned, and Bulletproof was happy to see him. Mark let Zandel keep the Viltrumite costume. Right after this sweet exchange, Zandel was informed that Dinosaurus was planning on blowing up half the city of LA. When he went to take care of that and evacuate the citizens, he witnessed the death of Mark Grayson and several others. Later, of course, we all learned together that Mark was never dead. Zandel was surprised to find this out, but he was not too upset about it. Rex, on the other hand, was not happy about Mark's behavior at all. Zandel, who saw a lot of himself in Mark, defended Mark to the fullest. That made it very clear to Rex who Zandel would support if push came to shove. Surely this won't be important later, right? It's not like Rex wants to control everyone and take over the world, right? Rex the Conqueror Even though Zandale made it very clear that he was supportive of Mark, and an overall righteous person, the reality was far from the truth. When Rex started to take over the world, the first people to go loggerheads were the Guardians. Most of the Guardians managed to escape Rex, but when you have someone like Zandale on the team, things get a bit tricky. Zandale knew that if he wanted to survive this whole ordeal in one piece, the best thing he could do would be to join hands with Robot. So that's what he did. He betrayed his friends and imprisoned them. While working with Rex, Bulletproof was tasked to capture the Immortal. Zandale knew it would be a challenge, but he was not the one to shy away from it. But Immortal was prepared for this. Right when Zandale was about to catch him, Immortal activated a bomb that he had inside him the whole time. The explosion engulfed Zandale, and when the smoke cleared, we found out that half of his face was brutally scarred. Later, when Rex offered to fix Zandale's face, Zandale refused, explaining that this mark would remind him of the horrible things he'd done so far. How powerful is Bulletproof? Tyrone didn't do the right thing when he decided to use his brother as a guinea pig. However, Tyrone's calculations did give the Guardians of the Globe a new member who was extremely strong and capable. With interstellar travel being an easily accessible option for Zandale, it doesn't surprise anyone that his top speed for flight happens to be around 750 miles per hour. But there's more to him than this. Bulletproof is able to absorb energy from all around him and keep it stored like a battery. With his body acting like a limitless reservoir of energy, Zandale happens to be one of the most durable characters in the Invincible Universe. His natural kinetic energy is more than enough to sustain himself. That's why if he were to be put in space, he could simply survive just by holding his breath. This also means that Zandale does not need food or water. But as a foodie, Zandale didn't eat to live, but instead lived to eat. Plus, with his body using up stored energy at all times, he never gains weight, no matter how much Zandale Zandale eats. So basically, Zandale is every glutton's wet dream. This self-sustenance, which is a main power, also makes Zandale just as invulnerable as Omni-Man. Cecil noted that owing to Zandale's power, his body almost never takes damage. You throw a punch at him and he'll simply absorb the energy from it, easily surviving the punch. We all remember how long it took Mark to recover from his fight with Battle Beast. Well, Zandale also recovered from the whole fight within two weeks, which is a huge achievement on his part because he's not a Viltrumite. His healing factor is off the charts, which begs the question, Question. Whose healing factor is superior, Zandale's or Logan's? But that's a story for another day. Marvelous Verdict Zandale Randolph had a hard life. Growing up being constantly compared to your sibling and being neglected by your parents is really not an easy thing to go through. This is why Zandale Randolph is a character that a lot of fans can relate to. It's clear that throughout his entire life, Zandale simply wanted a place where he could belong and be cherished, but he was not sure how to go about it. The complexities of this character make Zandale real and beg us, the viewers, to wonder, is this superhero who killed his parents really that bad? And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone!